Welcome back to the Sampan Viking on China channel. It had been my intention to move the subject away from Taiwan for the next video, for the next few videos, but the uh, aftermath of the Biden town hall speech the other day has brought the Taiwan question firmly back into focus. And so it is, I think, incumbent on me um, to discuss it now and how um, the apparent um, contradiction um, of what Biden is saying um, actually dovetails very nicely to what has been predicted on this channel over the course of the last few months. Um, well, of course, what happened at the uh, CNN town hall event was that Biden was asked a direct question about coming to defense of Taiwan, and he said yes. The fact that Shum, as soon as he said that, um, officials from the White House um, started scuttling around saying, well, no, that's not what he meant at all. And uh, in fact, there is no change to the one China policy. I don't think is particularly convincing. Um, there's been a welter of evidence produced in recent months from uh, other statements put out by the State Department and general articles from knowledgeable sources, which have made it pretty clear that the United States has a overt, uh, covert rather, um, policy to defend Taiwan. Uh, at least that's what it is saying. Now, I think this has to be seen in context, again, uh, as we said earlier about the movement of the, uh, of the geostrategic tectonic plates, I think also now that we are seeing the battle lines um, drawn uh, for the next major superpower confrontation, which is between the Western-style liberal democracies and the uh, more autocratic um, Asian states of the uh, Asian continent. Now, this is a subject in its own right. I, I'm not going to spend a lot of time looking at that, but there are nuances to this, contradictions to this. Um, but looking at what, um, you know, um, then Stoltenberg was saying just the other day that NATO was prepared to defend global interests worldwide, the fact that the State Department has described um, the alliance of NATO, Japan, um, South Korea, Australia and Taiwan means that there is a covert policy of defending Taiwan. Or certainly this is what we are being led to believe by nods and winks. Now, I have to say I'm not particularly convinced. Um, I think a lot of people are saying this is a bluff. And I'd have to go along with that. I think also it is a bluff. And it is a bluff for one very, very simple reason. And that is, I think it is acknowledged now that if it came to a shooting war between the United States Navy and the PLAN and its other forces around Taiwan, it's too close to the Chinese mainland for the United States Navy and Marines to be able to prevail. The People's Republic, People's Liberation Army, would be able to concentrate all its forces, um, air, sea and missile against the, against the uh, foe in that area. And quite frankly, um, the United States would stand to lose by military obliteration, um, bluntly, uh, in, in that scenario. So what is this all about? Why would he bluff on this? I mean, certainly, as we said, there is serious lines now being drawn for the confrontation between the superpowers, but I don't think Taiwan is going to be the battlefield in which it's fought. I think it is very much a bluff, and it is to do with what I believe that the United States' real intention is, which is to create the pretext to enforce a total trade embargo on China and those that associate with China, meaning Russia, Iran, etc., etc. Now, this is a, a fairly drastic um, policy for them to take. It would be a fairly major confrontation in its own right. But it is a case, I think, of really trying to trick the Taiwanese into believing aid is going to come in the event of a conflict if they declared independence, when in fact there wouldn't. This is the pretext that they are looking for. And we said this in previous videos. How would this work? Well, either that the Taiwanese would declare independence, in which case the Chinese would invade, and everybody knows it, or that the United States Navy would concentrate pretty much in total around the island, the Philippine Sea, etc., to enable the Taiwanese to declare independence, in which case there would be uh, the mother of all sea battles um, and amphibious battles um, to sort it out, which the United States would undoubtedly lose, 
or there is the case where the Chinese believe independence is going to be declared, and so they have to act um, to preempt this, and so act uh, preemptively in order to take the island and prevent independence being declared before the American forces can get there. These conditions still remain, and I think Biden's comments are a provocation based on that, um, on those conditions, looking to provoke the Chinese into taking uh, premature action um, in order to head off a, a crisis before, you know, a full military crisis before it occurs. Well, anybody who believes that the Chinese don't understand this and can't see it coming from a million miles away really, really need to change their hobby um, because very clearly they can. But can the same amount of sophistication be attributed to the Taiwanese, to the DPP leadership on Taiwan uh, that currently form the Taiwanese government. Um, this I do wonder. These are very ideologically driven people who probably will believe um, this kind of story and allow themselves to be manipulated into making a decision that would be disastrous for them. And, and that, I think, is what these comments by Biden are really trying to do. The bluff is to say we are going to stand when they have absolutely no intention, but the Taiwanese believe them. I think it is not a done deal by any stretch of the imagination that the Chinese would let them get away with doing that. And these are some of the measures that I've discussed in, again, the more recent um, previous videos with what China can do in order to provoke back and to demonstrate to the mass of the population on Taiwan, it, basically all those that aren't diehard ideological um, separatists, that the United States is not going to come to their aid. And so any attempt to um, to follow the path of independence is that just them being played as useful idiots um, in the greater part pawns in a greater part of America's greater geopolitical plans. This is definitely, I think, what you have to look at um, at, at the moment. And uh, the kind of measures that China would take, well, certainly the things that would provoke a form of reaction from the West. And I've said them before, I'll say them again. Um, a form of national security law could be framed differently, could be an act of formal reunification um, that has to be accepted. Um, certainly putting some form of exclusion zone around the island and Chinese coastal waters, I think, would be um, a, a vital step to prove that to the Taiwanese that the Americans weren't going to come and dispute. And in fact, when I say a, a national security law, I'm looking for an, an, an instrument, a legal instrument that gives China the right to undertake these kind of actions. Um, so, again, if it was explicit in, in, in the law, simply the fact that it existed um, would be, would start asking questions in the West that maybe they'd be find difficult to answer. But certainly, if an, if an, if an embargo of the island, uh, an external embargo of the island were, and an exclusion zone were set up, that really would be the gauntlet. Would the Americans dare to come into that zone? And if they didn't, that Beijing would simply say to Taipei and the Taiwanese people, look, they're not going to come. They're not. They're not help helping you. We have the power. Um, you respect power, which is again a bit of a Chinese tradition. They, might is is right. Um, certainly, I think in a lot of Confucian thought. Um, so we have the might. We have the right. You need to follow us, and the weathercocks will swing um, without question in order to line up with the uh, configuration of power as it is demonstrated in the region. So that, I think, is my take on Biden's comments. It's an attempt to um, provoke a pretext for America to uh, declare a, a full trade embargo against China. And it doesn't matter what happens on Taiwan, even if it was, um, you know, a, 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 coup, a, a military coup by the Republic of China, of China army who want absolutely nothing to do with independence. It wouldn't make any difference. It would complicate things, obviously. Um, but we've seen how America can spin a false narrative. Um, so they wouldn't let a little thing like that get in the way. They'd still direct it at the PRC. And the Chinese know this. Um, whatever happens, the Americans are looking for a pretext. And if something happens that's close enough, they'll use it. Obviously, the closer 
the um, the narrative is to the reality on the ground, the better. And if it was a, uh, a military coup by the RSE, well, they'd just be described as um, pawns of the PRC um, and not people in their own right. The ROC would be discounted, ignored as a political entity. It would simply be either separate Taiwan or PR China, whether that included Republic of China forces or not. So understand that. I mean, the America would simply bulldoze through reality on this and simply have their own, uh, to have, add their own narrative. And the closer it got to the events on the ground, the better for them. It's just a bit more difficult, as we've seen with Xinjiang, um, if it is uh, significantly distant from the truth on the ground. So I think I'm going to leave it there. Um, this is where I think this has taken us to. It is interesting times, and the other other question is, and in what time frame now is this going to resolve itself? People have said 2024, uh, and it might, um, but I've got a funny feeling that with this amount of momentum um, building up with events, it might all happen a lot faster than that. So we will keep watching, we will keep commentating, and uh, we will come back to this again before too long, I'm sure. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed listening. Um, if you have, please like. If you would like to be informed of other videos coming out, hit subscribe, ring the bell, and if you'd like other people to listen to my views, press share. And if you would like to ask a question or leave an opinion of your own, uh, please leave a comment. And if it is something that uh, needs an answer, I will do so to the best of my ability where appropriate. Thank you very much. I look forward to you all joining me in the next video.